Things were up bright and early this morning. Welcome to the experience of everybody else around the world that watches WWE pay-per-views. That's right, our entitled American asses saying, this is terrible. Could you imagine being up till 4 or 5 a.m. for a pay-per-view? <laughs> Fans in the UK and other places are like, ah, tell me how my ass tastes. Bitches, now you get a taste of what we deal with. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, it's okay. It's a Saturday morning. Shit, I am perfectly fine with that. Get it done, out of the way, and then let's move on with the rest of the weekend. Am I right? Of course I'm right. I'm always right. Anyways, let's talk about Elimination Changer... Changer? Elimination Chamber Perth. Or if you live in Germany, <laughs> let's call it No Escape. And absolutely not make any references to the chamber whatsoever. If you know, you know. Uh, I'm kind of glad whatever they're doing with our truth right now didn't involve him driving around Austria to ask where the chamber is because, yeah, that would have been really fucked up and kind of a morbid, too soon type of humor. Again, if you know, you know, you get it, you get it. And if you don't, read a fucking history book of World War II is all I'm saying. Um, so this show... Big venue, 50 plus thousand people. I always like when WWE or AEW goes international because the houses are better, the crowds are typically hotter, and where this wasn't certainly a Puerto Rico level or England level crowd, this was a damn good crowd. They represented and held themselves up well. Well, they didn't get a ton of show here. They only got four matches and one main, you know, talk segment. And that's probably okay. I think those fans in Perth, Australia would have felt like, should have felt like they got their money's worth. It was a solid show, but there were certainly things that were missing. We start off with the women's chamber match. That's what kicked off the show. And... Tiffany Stratton obviously was the big hero there, and she had herself kind of what I would think of as a breakout performance. Really good stuff by her. Um, this was a good match. It was much better than the women's Royal Rumble match last month. I couldn't imagine if he had the choice between watching this women's chamber match and the women's Royal Rumble match that you match, because that was a fucking largely disastrous showing here though pretty solid the finish between bianca Liv morgan becky lynch perfectly timed incredibly well executed all of that though to say is anybody surprised that becky lynch won no neither was i and it's like eh okay the man versus mommy at WrestleMania, fine. Once Becky Lynch won this, you know, maybe you had some hope that the main event was going to end differently than it did, but I, it was going to be incredibly unlikely, even though Becky and Nia certainly have history and a story there. Uh, we got the Judgment Day versus the New Catch Republic. What a stupid ass fucking name for a tag team. Oh, what a surprise! The loser weights a part of the tag team. Dumb character, dumb worker, dumb team name. Big fucking surprise. This match went on too long for my liking. And I'm being kind of foul and grinchy today. Because I am. That said though, Dominic Mysterio making the most of his opportunity as he always does, doing his daddy Eddie Guerrero so proud. He's not there to be liked. He's there to make fucking money. And since apparently his match with Brock Lesnar got <laughs> ixnayed real quick, eh? Uh, they audibled. He gets a trip to Australia. He shows up for a few minutes, doesn't have to take any dangerous bumps, and he can be the star of the fucking show. Nice work if you can get it for sure. Like the way he can just by grabbing a mic generate legit, meaningful, we want to see you get your ass beat heat is truly awesome. And I wish more young talent in the business, coming up in the business, 
took their cues from Dominic Mysterio on how cool it is to be hated and not be so insecure where you have to feel like everybody has to love you. Um, but Judgment Day retains. Thank God, loser weight can go hell the way. Oh no, he bent a finger. Oh no, he bent two fingers. It's so fucking stupid. There are two types of people in this world. Loser weights and people like me that hate loser weights. Which one are you? <laughs> Anyways, uh, you knew the other highlight or big deal of this show was going to be the Grayson Waller effect because you knew you were going to have Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes there. A and I got to say, the segment itself was good. I give credit there. It was good. It worked. But man, oh man. Did it really feel like it was fucking missing something, not having either Dwayne there or Roman there? It just did, right? Like when you have Cody issuing the challenge to Rock saying, I'm free between now and Mania, anytime, any place. Imagine if the Rock comes out. All of that Rocky sucks chant shit would go by the wayside because they would realize what a real megastar looks like and not the abortion of a fucking immunity nightmare that's being positioned as one for them. Boo the rock. Boo you, Cody Crybaby. <laughs> he defeats the story. He defeats the story. The only way finishing the story makes any fucking sense to where it would actually be a fucking story is that Cody is so goddamn desperate to win the championship and beat Roman Reigns at WrestleMania that him and Rock have been in cahoots the whole time and it leads to Cody turning fucking heel. Anything else is dumb dick fucking ridiculous. And pretending like it isn't is asinine and you goddamn good and well know it. Ugh. But yeah, you know, where are they going with this? Are you actually going to do Cody versus The Rock one-on-one? -on -one? Are you doing a tag match since you had the whole Seth like, I know it's not just Wonder Room. So when, they, when, when they're when they there, I'll be there with you. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, who gives a shit? Uh, moving on to the men's chamber match. The crowd was really hot for Bobby Lashley. And that dude just never fucking ages, does he? What's he, like, 46, 47? Some ridiculous ass thing like that? Dude's in incredible, phenomenal shape. Looks as good as he ever has. Moving pretty much as well as he ever has, relatively speaking. Um, but what do I come away from this match? I thought this chamber match was also really good. I, I liked both of the chamber matches this time. Um, Logan Paul was a heat seeker in this one, wasn't he? Like you talk about biggest heels of the night. Dominic Mysterio, obviously, is number one. And then number two... And it was pretty close, actually. It's Logan Paul. That Aussie crowd hates Logan Paul. <laughs> they despise Logan Paul. And it's beautiful. And wrestling is so much better, isn't it? When you have the traditional heel babyface dynamics and a legit heel that is intending to work as a heel. You're not trying to work against the crowd. You're going with the crowd. The crowd is going with you. Like It just fucking works so much better. And, you know, as you watch this match, you're like, one thing that stands out, oh, AJ Styles flew halfway around the world just to fuck over LA Knight in the chamber match. How about that? Well, damn, that's a reason now for the two to have a match at Mania. Would it be my top choice for an LA Knight match at WrestleMania personally? But at least if you're going to go with the AJ Styles as pissed as LA Knight thing, you went there with the damn gimmick. You went all the way because to go halfway around the world just to fuck him out of his spot, that's real hatred. That's shit that you can freaking believe in. That's the type of powerful petty that can make you some money. Um, Again, Logan Paul, the heel here, to me, honestly, the star of the match that made it work. Um, as Kevin Owens is going after him. Bobby Lashley's going after him. And then when you do the brass knuck spot and near Andy Orton, who's been nursing a back injury almost the entire time. No, folks, that's called breakfast club business. That's called I'm not going over. I'm not putting it forth any more effort than I must, brother. That's how big boy business is done, bitches. But he hits 
Logan Paul with the RKO out of nowhere. And then Logan Paul fucking sits there and hits Orton. After he's eliminated, he hits Orton with the brass knucks. Like, that whole finishing sequence, the finishing sequences for these two chamber matches were outstanding. The timing, the execution, phenomenal. The only thing I've got to call out here, and it's pissing me off, it's one thing if I'm not going to get Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania XL, biggest WrestleMania of all time, so let's have the main event be the same fucking match as last year. That's goddamn stupid and everybody knows it. But I could have dealt with that. I could overcome that. Even though it should be somebody like a Braun Breaker that you would have been preparing the past year to put in that fucking spot. So that way you could sit there at WrestleMania 40 and say, this is the guy for the next fucking decade. Cody Rhodes, as much as some of you idiots like him, is not the guy for the next decade. Frankly, Roman Reigns ain't the guy for the next fucking decade. That's what a WrestleMania 40 main event should be for. And of course it's not. So if it wasn't going to be about that, let's make it the biggest star-studded event that it is. And we didn't fucking get that either. But as much as that chaps my ass, what really grinds my fucking gears is now you're telling me we're going towards Logan Paul versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania? God damn it, WWE! You had one job! This has been years in the making! Once in a lifetime! This time it counts! Randy Orton, John Cena, WrestleMania. And you're fucking screwing the pooch here. Am I pissed? Goddamn right I'm pissed. There are only a couple things I was looking forward to to this year's WrestleMania, and it looks like I'm not getting a damn damn one of them. Randy Orton versus John Cena transcends WrestleMania, is bigger than WrestleMania, and is basically Russell porn, and we get to watch it on OnlyFans. Yup, that's where we're at in 2024. Fuck! Anyways, at this point in time in the show, I'm pissed because Drew McIntyre wins. He's going to face Seth Rollins, and nobody really gives a fuck. And we're losing our real dream match of Randy Orton versus John Cena at WrestleMania. It's being snatched away. Snatched away! This close to the finish line, damn it! I said, fuck this, I'll take the dogs out for a walk. However, I come back, and Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax for the Women's World Championship is just starting. I said, oh, fuck, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> Chain, none of the chamber matches were main event in the show. Rhea Ripley was main eventing in Australia, ding dong. Well, that's how long it took us to get to the main event match. Um, am I the only one here that thought that Nia kind of carried this one? Just me? I think we're reaching that point where Rhea Ripley's got to go full baby face. And maybe that happens. She loses a strap after Mania. It feels like we're getting to that point. Um, but man, Nia Jax has gotten a lot better. She really has improved. And she worked it as well as she could work it here and worked it the way she should have based, based off of the opponent, based off of the environment, based off of the circumstances. Uh, but Rhea Ripley retains because, of course, the man's going to get the shot to take the strap from her at WrestleMania. Lottie freaking da. I much rather see Bianca Belair. I saw some people saying, well, this is going to set up her and Liv Morgan. It better fucking not. The only match we need to see is Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill at WrestleMania. Hell fucking yes. Sign me up for that shit. That's the women's match I want to see. Well, why would you want to see that? Are you stupid? Come on, man. Anyways. I look at this and I say, this show was largely predictable. Did any of these winners really surprise you? Being predictable isn't always bad, but it'd be nice to have a little bit of spontaneity. So if the spontaneity comes at WrestleMania and it means that Roman retains over Cody Rhodes and you say, fuck that story, we're only in the bottom of the sixth inning, then sign me the fuck up for that. But otherwise, it was a solid show. It was a worthwhile watch. American fans could be mad because they had to get up so damn early or stay up so late, depending on if they were on the West Coast or not. But I had a decent time.